What's going on, guys? Welcome in here to uh, Rover Sports. Um, it is time to um, analyze Drew Locke. Uh, so exciting. Uh, it's exciting to, to finally be back with uh, film reviews. This is obviously the first of the year. So I am uh, I'm pumped. I'm pumped up for it. Don't believe we are in condensed yet. And um, there's Ed Reed, and and what we're doing here with the show is we're gonna sh we're gonna show you Drew Lot, and we're gonna show you exactly what he goes through. Um, so I have my opinions about Drew Lot in this game. And we're gonna get started on Drew. He starts off, believe, at the end of the, at the end of a missed field goal. So we're 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 gonna get to that point. Um, there he is on the field. Kevin Hogan started the game, which I didn't care. Um, and, and as we get in the lock, we're also gonna talk about philosophy, expectation. All sorts of different variables. Because this is a because scouting quarterbacks is a, is an interesting process. And you guys are here with me now. The good news is you can freaking rewind or fast forward uh, this <laughs> and eventually maybe Maybe I'll actually get to to to, to watching Locke play uh, an actual down of football, but I, I'm not sure if that if, if I'm ever going to get to there. Um, but but they missed a 54 yarder, and it should be right here. So it was in the second quarter. That's a good sign. Watch seeing Locke. So this was. Um, this was where Drew Locke scrambled, I believe, and he also got hit, um, resulting in a first down, or, or it might not have been here. Um, so second and seven for Locke, a little bit of confusion there, and um, just getting re-familiarizing re myself with Locke. So let's view this slowly. You see right here, they're playing like kind of a 4-2. There's some linebackers there. It looks like it's only cover one because it's man, it's strict man-to-man, -man, which Atlanta is being aggressive here. So they they only rush four, though. The blocking is decent. Your 79 gets beat, and then inside, Drew Locke actually gets hit as the ball is away. And that ball is attended for, it might be Noah Fant, but that's a safe throw. And that's a pretty damn good throw by Drew Locke because he's giving his guy an opportunity. And and, th and that's kind of what I want to see from Drew Locke. Like, I didn't mind that at all. Like, I like that he takes that shot deep down the field. I like this throw a lot from Drew Locke. Um, it has a lot of arc on it. And... I like it. Now let's see if Drew is 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 focusing on this side of the field. So let's kind of let's pause it. Let's see if any of these dudes get open cuz during the game it's kind of hard to see this and we can't go in the coach's film because this is preseason football. So we can also see here there's going to be the center and the left guard are going to be working. And these are all backup players. So right here, the center and the left guard, the the center fails. And right here, Drew Locke actually has a guy open. So maybe Drew could have hit him. Let's watch where Drew's eyes are, though. He's probably looking off that free safety. And he's going down the field to big fan. So the entire play was pretty much, 
it was pretty much scripted, this play. Now let's watch Drew Locke here. Let's watch um let's watch his body, which his feet have gotten better. His release time's very quick. I like that step back there. And Drew Locke here generates good power. You can see he has a good wide base, and this is plenty of arm strength and power, which Brett Rippon or Kevin Hogan does not have. That's a pre a prerequisite. It doesn't mean that you're gonna be a good quarterback. Um, because you have it, but the fact that Drew Locke has natural velocity, that made me appeal to Locke when he was just a freshman at um, Missouri. And he has touch. You know, Drew Locke on his deep ball, he, his deep ball, he can throw with touch. So here's third and seven. I don't know if they're going to be running here. This is one of his poor throws of the night. It could have been a pick six here from Drew Locke. Choppy feet. And very behind and late. A terrible combination, obviously. So let's kind of view the choppiness of the feet, which Scangarello is probably going to have to fix. So Drew takes the snap. A backpedal like Mahomes. He tries to get that he tries to get that right foot back a lot. But you see his feet are just choppy and there's pressure in his face. Let's see if Drew Locke even the entire time. Let's see if he even keeps his head up during this throw. Guys open. The ball just needs to be out. Just a lot of unnecessary steps, it seems like. Especially, you know, since they're bringing the house. And it was not blocked up very well. But this is a play that we really have to study. And we really have to decipher exactly what is going wrong with the footwork of Locke. Yeah, his feet were just choppy. Uh, in fact, I'll point to where his feet almost, he almost trips himself. Right there is not a good position because we need a wider base here. But here, all the pressure is in this guy's face. Locke, he just has right here, he, he is not able to step into his throw, okay? Um, his offensive line got completely destroyed. This is a low, really low percentage play, and his offensive line got completely destroyed. But Locke has to basically have a quicker drop and he needs to get the ball out and he's fading away here and that's just a very low percentage throw he needs to have a perfect pocket to complete that out and Drew Locke can absolutely do that but right here the tackle just gets destroyed uh right here the offensive line is a sieve throughout this play and this is off of his back foot and a really bad decision, and the footwork can get a lot better, meaning I want to see Locke get to his base a lot faster. I don't want this kind of five-step drop when this offensive line is horrible. He's playing with the second stringer, so you need to take that all into account. That very well could have been a pick six there, and there was holding on that play. So... Um, a lot of that was Locke's fault. It was a bad decision. Locke should have just probably gotten a sack on that play. And, um, yeah. So, I'll tell you after this next series, which the third quarter, I didn't, I, I, I was actually traveling. So, a lot of the third quarter we're going to be catching up with as well. Uh, there, there weren't any points really scored in the third quarter. That was the pass interference. I still didn't think that was a pass interference. Locke gets the football back. And here we go. All right, guys. We are back here. And um, we're going to be watching Drew Locke. Um, so we are watching Locke on our show. This is when you know that Drew Locke is... Uh, you know he's rattled when Atlanta calls a timeout and Drew Locke, this is first game rookie kind of mistakes. 
a delay a game occurs there that's how you know that there's you know some um that that just organizationally we just have to really get up to speed um third and 10 then they decide to do a draw play um then i believe that you know that that atlanta is able to get down the field and get uh get some points as well uh i want to show here second quarter of play Drew Locke had a drive here, uh, a couple of plays that were uh, that were interesting, and really there you you see illustrated is that Drew Locke came from Josh Heupel. So unlike Kyler Murray, Drew Locke is going to be sitting for an extended period of time. Uh, Drew Locke, and and that's the thing about Denver is that they're easing Drew Locke, they're easing him into this process they're not thrusting him into the starting lineup and Trevor Simeon is not on this team anymore uh, Joe Flacco is and Joe Flacco is is a professional he's won a, he's won a Super Bowl before he started and been a pretty good quarterback in this league so he's going to be mentoring Locke and this this West Coast offense it isn't like an Andy Reid offense it's not like Matt Nagy um, it's really hard to master like these 15 word sentences. This is right out of the Kyle Shanahan tree, right out of the Kyle Shanahan book. So there you get a second and five. Um, I think we're going to take another deep shot here on second and four. But the point is with Drew Locke is that we are going very, very slowly um, with with his progress. And for Locke, you know, this year preferably is not going to start. Maybe next year he doesn't even start. Um, which is okay. It's a different kind of model um, as a quarterback. And here this is disappointing because this is just a flat miss. He had him running back on linebacker. Um, Drew Locke does a good job with his eyes, and, and that ball has a lot of heat on it. Um, and I wish that Locke would have just taken something off of it. Let's see the footwork here. Footwork looks fine from Locke. I like how he gets back to throw. Drew Locke. Steps up, and this ball just needs a little bit more arc on it. But clearly, you see the arm strength, and this ball is missed by maybe like two yards. It's so close, and you have a linebacker down there. But I love the aggressiveness of Locke. That's why I'm so excited to see what he can do. You just see the town here. Even though this ball wasn't completed, Mark Rippon or Trevor Simeon, they're not going to have that same trajectory on a ball. That's how you know it's arm strength because this ball gets up and down quickly. This is like a 40-yard throw. The release time is ridiculously fast, and the ball gets up and down. There, there's no dead arc on this ball. This is a ball thrown from the middle of the field to the far out. This guy has unbelievable talent. This guy has great arm talent, and that's why he could succeed. Also, the intangibles with Locke are off the charts. His character is fantastic. He has that confidence. He works hard. You saw him go back to Missouri with his quarterback coach, and he tried to, he was reading these plays in the mirror. Paxton Lynch would be in the treehouse with his friends. Drew Locke isn't doing that stuff. Also, I believe Drew Locke it, it steps up in the face of adversity, which I also like to see from a quarterback as well, because I believe here that Drew Locke is going to take a shot, and he does, and he takes the shot from that guy, and right here you see a little stunt, and Zimmer's going to hit him pretty hard. Now we're going to see some mobility out of the kid, which I like. Everybody's covered. Drew Locke here improvising really well. I want to see him get down earlier. I want to see him get down earlier. That was an awkward slide. But Drew Locke here, the stunt gets by. Drew Locke, athletic, athletic ability. And he is not losing ground there. First down. So overall, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, he, he's just missed on a couple of deep balls so far. And with Drew Locke, it is not like Kyler Murray. I can't emphasize that enough. This guy is not going to be thrown in early. Um, now, with quarterbacks, you could have like an Aaron Rodgers situation, or you could be Carson Wentz or, or a lot of these new guys and play immediately. You could be Kurt Warner and Eli Manning. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, all, it's all kind of different processes with the, uh, with the damn quarterbacks. Um, there's all different ways to, to kind of go about this uh, process.
Um, of course, my internet is screwing up, and I want to be able to get on with the dang game. Um, but I might have to exit out again, which is totally going to suck in, in a lot of different capacities. But you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna exit out, and now I'm gonna come back in. Okay. Drew Locke was laughing in the huddle. He was enjoying his time. He has that confidence and that swag, man, that I really like to see. Um, oh, here we get a nice little bootleg from Drew Locke. And, and this is where Locke, again, where you could tell that, 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 that he's kind of a little bit nervous, um, that this is his first game. He takes the snap well. You see some mobility. He's losing ground. He's almost tripping over himself, but he just needs to desperately get that completion. So once again, this is going to be a process with Scangarello and Locke, okay? They are totally taking their time, and when Drew Locke finally takes the field, when Drew Locke takes the field, which is maybe hopefully going to be in two years, I want him to get ample opportunities to start in the regular season, unlike uh, Paxton Lynch that, you know, was, was, was Vance Joseph would put in Paxton, he would take him out, he'd put him in, he'd put in Simeon. He, Paxton Lynch uh, didn't have the type of recognition skills that Drew Locke had. I mean, Drew Locke has a good feel for the game, Paxton at zero, but Paxton Lynch also was, was not really trusted. Uh, so, so here is something that I know Drew can, can, can learn from, and this is just a first game kind of thing. And, uh, and Drew got better at this as you go along. So, Drew, no, no, nobody's there. Everybody's covered. Drew Locke needs to figure out a way to throw this ball away, okay? He cannot, obviously, backpedal in this situation. He sees a guy coming right here, and this is just a panic job, okay? A complete panic job. He loses a ton of yards, okay? That's why he is young and he's raw, and rookies are going to make mistakes like that. So, with Drew Locke, you know... The thing is, a lot of people watching this video, I said Sam Darnold wouldn't be a good NFL quarterback. I believe Drew Locke is going to be a good quarterback. Um, because we have to sometimes guess. When you're making a video, you have to guess and say, you know, is Drew Locke going to be awesome or not? And I'm in the let's wait and see, let's watch his development very closely. And a lot of times, like look at Josh Rosen, it depends on your coaching staff. And here... Uh, you have Vic Fangio, who's an older guy, and Scangarello, the key is Rich Scangarello has to stay. He, If he pulls a Matt LaFleur and the Broncos are left without really um, without without an offensive coordinator, uh, that then Drew Locke is screwed. Th th then this whole thing goes to shit. If Scangar but if Scangarello is the, success the, the successor to... Um, to Vic Fangio, then everything is right in the world. Then we're okay. Scangarello has to stay the entire time with Drew Locke. And I believe Scangarello is a good teacher. He just can't leave because this offense is very, very complicated. This is not at all rookie-friendly stuff. They are not adapting this offense around Drew Locke, okay? Let's see this play right here. I want some more checkdowns available. So you have the back in here, but this 79 is so bad. He gets beat every time. And Drew Locke there looks at the line of scrimmage, which is like an old Tyrod Taylorism, which I didn't like about Tyrod, is that you have to still keep your eyes down the field in the face of pressure. And yes, that could be worrisome. Did Drew Locke play well tonight? Absolutely not. Right there, you see him sliding up and... This is why game experience helps because under pressure, he was not good there. He was not good at all um, because I want to see him here. I want to see him step up, and yes, the O-line is shitty, right? But I want to see him step up, and I want there to be safety valves. And really, the offensive coordinator, he needs to leak out a back or something. We need some safety valves for Locke. Locke's footwork can get faster as he gets prepared, 
But right there, he's sliding up too far for no real reason. And, uh, and, and he looks at the line uh, crumbling. He doesn't keep his eyes up and look at the receivers there. And if he continues to do that, that's an awful habit. And he's not going to do well in terms of games, in terms of dealing with uh, pressure. But listen, it's his first game. I have unbelievable patience with this guy because the Broncos are treating him with kid gloves, okay? Um, so I am... I'm all right uh, with, with with how they're handling uh, Drew Locke in this uh, in this circumstance. Let's see the third quarter. He tried another throw deep down the left sideline. Um, and I think Locke's going to be better. He's done really well in the training camps uh, thus far. Um, and this third quarter to me is going to be completely foreign. I haven't watched any of it, to be completely honest with you guys. And I want to get this video up. Uh, I do. Um, so just watching here with Locke, he performed better a little bit as the game kind of progressed. I saw that. Um Yeah, that's a good move after. I mean, I, I do want to see Locke um, be more patient, but again, the game's going pretty fast for him. Um, he doesn't go to his deeper guy. Who? What are they playing here? They're playing in cover three. And they want him to throw to that spot. So, yeah, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Like, Locke is not a finished product at all, and they're not taking him along. And this offense is very, very difficult. He's not like a Kurt Benkert. Like, Benkert in his second year, you could tell, it, you know, if he had to play quarterback, like, he'd actually be, like, a, a decent option as a quarterback. But the league is full of good quarterbacks. Uh, but Kurt Benkert was pretty dang good in, in his time um, as a uh, as a quarterback. So Drew Locke, um, I, I like I like the release of Locke. I, I I just like the experience. And once again, this is a rookie kind of quarterback. Um, and look, that that throw was a dime. So yes, Chad Kelly had a lot of success, but his offense was easier last year. This is a great throw. He looks off the defender. He puts it on a rope. Uh, his release time is really quick. I just love how this guy plays the game. I think he has great feel for the game. I believe in Locke. I believe it was a steal in the second round. And this guy could could be one of the best quarterbacks in the league in, in four or five years. I'm going to be patient. I believe in the talent. Now, a lot of people will say, well, you quit on Lamar Jackson. You quit on Sam Darnold. And you don't believe that guys like Ryan Finley are going to be very good or Will Greer. Yeah, I don't believe in their arm talent. I believe in Locke's talent. And if I were the project, I think Locke is going to be good. Now, what Denver is doing, I, I, I can see what they're doing. And I don't disagree with it. You have Joe Flacco there. Um, he's going to be the starter this year. You are progressing him with at slower than pretty much any quarterback's. Um, and I want to see him maybe get the second reps, and I want to see Locke during the season continue to understand this offense. And as long as Scangarello stays, as long as Scangarello becomes the head coach after Fangio leaves, because Fangio's 61, or if Scangarello has no ambitions to be a head coach, if Scangarello leaves, this whole plan goes to complete shit. I cannot emphasize that enough, that Scangarello has to stay because this offense is confusing as hell. It's, it's, the West Coast offense is what Favre and Holmgren, and it takes years and years of practice. Once you, have, once you have the West Coast offense down, then you can be really dangerous. You'll be like Kyle Shanahan. You'll be like Matt LaFleur. You'll be like John Gruden. You'll be able to get all these matchups that you need on offense. You'll be a versatile offense offense um, where you can attack defenses but for Locke I mean this is just this whole training camp is, uh, is is water for a fire hose and that's what we see with a lot of rookie quarterbacks it's not like the like the uh, Dirk Cutter offense where it's see it and rip it it's not Cliff Kingsbury it's not even Sean McVay this training, this coaching staff is not adapting at all to Locke. Locke is trying to meet up with Joe Flacco 
and they are kind of putting Locke on the back burner for now. But I like the talent that I see from Locke. His attitude is fantastic. He's going to work hard. When you look at quarterbacks who succeed, you got to have talent, and Locke has talent. He's not Luke Falk. He's not a Trevor Simeon. The guy can throw it about 70 yards. His release is really fast, and he's a great athlete, and he's fast in space. His intangibles are very good. He's confident. He smiles. He's very charismatic. People want to lead. Um, People want to be around this kid. He is a charismatic character. Jordan Palmer called him one of the most charismatic characters that he's ever met. So that kind of personality trait is fantastic uh, for Denver fans. So, yes, Locke, at times at Missouri, he comes from the complete opposite. He comes from an aerial raid offense with Josh Heupel where it was one read and go. And then last year was a little bit more pro style with Derek Dooley. So he is continuing to evolve. Um, For Denver and for Denver fans, it's all about patience. Uh, It's going to take this kid a couple of years in the NFL uh, to really get this thing down. I just want to see him get a fair opportunity. I want the coaching staff to stick with the kid throughout the journey, and I want this to be a long journey, and I want him to start a lot of games and a lot of seasons. I do. Um, So I'm excited for Locke. Uh, A couple of good throws tonight. Uh, In the face of adversity, he wasn't very good. He almost threw an interception. Um, he, the, 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 uh, the delay a game was brutal, but again, this is his first game. His learning curve is a lot more difficult than all these ever rookie quarterbacks. And you have to take that into account when evaluating Locke. Okay. People might say, oh, well, he's not, he's not even close to Haskins or Murray, but their goal is for three years down the line for Drew Locke to be to a level that is even just just where the other dudes can't even touch him. So I'm excited. I I like it. And I think Drew Locke has the perfect.